Geeks of the Week. Stan, I did say if we reach a thousand subscribers by the end of the year, I'll show off my butt to the internet, and I will. But I don't think that's much of an incentive, so how about this? If we don't reach a thousand subscribers by the end of the year, I'll still show off my butt to punish you, the viewer, for not telling your friends about this awesome channel and making them subscribe. So either way, by the end, you're going to see some sweet, sweet Mario can. So tell your friends. Tell all of them. And it's already been mentioned, and you've probably already seen it, but you need to go watch Steph's Cooking with an LP video. She embodied the character. It was epic. You're not going to miss much in this video. It's just going to be me on the floor literally doing this. Welcome back, Pyro. My theory is that you ate some bad dragon food, and that's how you got sick. So you be careful next time. Luluko, I can't tell you how entertaining I find your Twitter feed. Because of the bunny pictures, but especially when you're tweeting about your comic book class. Expect many replies from me. Nikki, I'll send you my summer name because I'm ready to begin my training. I will be your Padawan. I'm ready for you to Captain Lee Shang me. Get your Miyagi on. You try to be best because you're only a man and the man's got to learn to take it. It's time for Good Geek Man. I'm sure you heard that last week the Bad Woman created a team of J.H. Williams III and Hidden Black Men quit over editorial differences. Their biggest beef being DC wouldn't let them marry Bad Woman to her girlfriend. My first reaction to this was, fuck you, DC. And my second reaction to this was, no, seriously, insert something into yourselves. But after taking a step back and reading many articles on the subject, especially the one on comic book resources, I'll post a link below to it, I realized that DC isn't against gay marriage, they're just against marriage in general. Still, it's a shame because Williams was doing a solid job on Bad Woman. It wasn't as good as Rucka's run, but still, he was doing really good work. And now they announced that Mark Andrico is going to be the next writer. I haven't read his work, so hopefully he can continue the excellent quality that Bad Woman is accustomed to because she deserves it. Wake up, kitties. Not time is over. It's time for comic reviews from me, the best comic review in the world. Yes! I'm going to start off with Avengers issue 19, written by Java Hickman and our Lennon Francis Yu. And this is the Infinity Time as Captain America and his crew of Avengers are licking their wounds after the Build Armada gave them an ass whooping. While Captain Marvel has been captured and she's so badass, she's given them an opportunity to give up. And finally, the Galactic Council's meeting to plot out their next move. There was a lot of action in this issue. And I've honestly been enjoying the builder aspect to the story, but I get it's an acquired taste, and if you don't like it, then you don't like Half of Infinity, and I understand that. Yu's artwork is perfect for this kind of story, he's really bringing it, so I'm enjoying that, and I rate this issue 4 out of 5. Next, Detective Comics issue 23.2, the Harley Quinn villain issue, written by Matt King and by Neil Gooch. And in this issue, we see a window into Harley Quinn's origin. We see her as a child, as a doctor, first meeting Mr. J. We see the origin of her new horrendous costume, which is a fanboy's wet dream. I mean, look at the brutastic cover. Seriously? I don't think I'll ever fully support Harley's new costume. By the way, the origins of it is she stole the leggings from high school girls, the spandex shorts from a runner, and the top from a hooker. Wow. But I'm trying to move past it. There were elements I did enjoy. At times, Quinn seemed very independent, and you want to root for her, but her motives are still to try to impress the Joker. Still not enough for me to recommend it, and I rate this issue 3 out of 5. Next, Avengers Arena issue 15, written by Dennis Hopeless and not by Kev Walker. And things are heating up as Bloodstone's inner demon is going berserk, like me at a box of cupcakes, while the rest of the contestants are trying to take him down without killing him. When this series first started, I dug the concept right away, but I was worried the ending was going to be predictable. As we're heading closer to it, I have no idea what's going to happen next. I've grown to care for a lot of these characters, and I'm excited to see what goes down. I rate this issue 4 out of 5. Next, Justice League issue 23.2, The Lobo Villain Issue, written by Marquis Vanet and not by Ben Oliver. And this introduces you to the new Lobo, to the much prettier Lobo. He looks like that douchebag Randy Orton. Anyways, in this issue, Lobo takes a job to get information he's seeking. Turnabout is fair play. They give Harley Quinn a really bad makeover, so it's only fair Lobo gets a metrosexual one. As for the issue, Lobo remains his usual cold-blooded self-centered self, but he lost part of his humor, at least so far. Uh, bored now. I rate this issue 2.5 out of 5. And finally, X-Men issue 5, written by Brian Wood and not by David Lopez. 
And this is part three of Battle of the Atom, as Young Jean Grey and Scott Summers are on the run because several X-Men teams are trying to get them to go back to their own time period. There have been a lot of epic X-Men events. Messiah Complex, Dark Phoenix Saga, Age of Apocalypse, and Battle of the Atom is not one of them. Not even close. Not in the same league. Young Jean Grey is coming off as selfish, whiny, and annoying. This is not the Jean Grey I remember. This is steadily heading in the bad direction for me, and I rate the issue 2.5 out of 5. So, uh, I'm out of cupcakes. This video is done. We're finished. That's it. Subscribe. Check out the other geeks. Blah, 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 blah. Stay geeky. Whatever. I need more cupcakes. I'm out of here. Excuse me. Oh, come on.